Um, hi, my, my name is Arthur Chang. I'm uh, representing NADA, uh, one of the principals there. Uh, NADA Eric Tamarani will be speaking later this afternoon. I'm here joined with um, uh, Chris Pataglia, one of our collaborators in the office. Of course, we've been really uh, thankful for the team that, uh, that we've been working with here at Boston, Boston Valley, uh, Andrew and Andy. Uh, Mitchell and John has been fantastic. Uh, we've also incorporated Silman um, engineers for some of the, um, the engineering work that we're, we're doing and Nat Oppenheimer, who's not here here today, but uh, was quite integral in getting this thing to stand up. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so we titled this thing, um, The Vessel. Uh, it may become more evident what that means uh, as I go through. Uh, recently, we were commissioned to do a renovation at the Metropolitan Museum of Art for the um, ancient Near East galleries uh, and the Cypress galleries. Uh, as Omar said, this group is not about facades. Unfortunately, they didn't give us a facade project. It's an interiors project. So, but um, the, at the Met, uh, you know, there's quite a history of, uh, of terracotta. Uh, the ancient Near East uh, collection goes back eight millennia and a, a significant part of that is terracotta. The idea of uh, an object that uh, that um, is hand formed has connection with uh, the body, uh, as a connection with the earth, um, and, and a connection with the, the divine in a way. Part of the gallery that we're working through is called Clay and Creation. It's the introduction to the ancient Near East gallery space, uh, and introduces the whole idea of the cosmos through clay and creation. You know, the idea of earth and water and sun and be able to bake a thing um, and from what's dust into a, an object that one can use. You know, through the hand molding process and fire, uh, we're, we're quite excited and interested about this, um, this kind of visceral handmade quality of the material. So this idea of a, a vessel, a bowl, a kind of inherent initial kind of creation of a, of a terracotta object in, in order to hold something liquid that normally you wouldn't be able to hold in your hands or just see you flow by you on a river. You know, this is something um, quite critical to the development of human civilization and being able to, uh, to build. So this gallery space uh, called Clay and Creation you know, kind of exists in this world between, um, you know, what's the terrestrial world, the water, and then the heavens. There is a digital uh, video installation that's in that space um, by Hana Malala called uh, uh, Drone Hits a Ziggurat of Ur. And that, uh, that, that video kind of rides above this space. And then this vessel in the, is, that space in between reflecting um, the installation and also becoming this uh, traffic circle in this, uh, this urban condition of, of the museum. So those of you who are familiar with the, the Met, uh, these two giant uh, statues called the Lamassu um, kind of frame the entry into that space. And, and then this, this vessel becomes um, a focal point. Because the way that the ancient Nereus has been framing their the context of uh, of their narratives, it's more rather than focusing on the um, uh, the more political and uh, 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 warlike challenges of it. It's more it, it's it's turned towards the the idea of materials, tectonics, and technology, and how cultures have advanced through that. So the idea that one might take what is initially a singular object, this vessel that you hold in your hand, that you create as a one singular piece and expand it into the scale of, of architecture um, means the introducing, introduction of other technologies. And then what, you know, what were we here to explore uh, within the context of uh, ACA and, um, and the museum um, all together, you know, are we, you know, with its connections to the um, the exhibits, the the stories that they want to tell about metallurgy, about glaze, about the textures of terracotta, the the actual earth that um, that 
this material comes from and the, the tones that play and contrast against the, the rest of the museum. So first of all, you know, throwing a pot is, um, once you get to a certain scale, you know, I don't know how big uh, your hands are. I, you know, you can only get to, to a certain scale. So when we begin to think about um, expanding, we look at the, uh, the ideas of domes, about, of uh, panelized portions and, and the inversion of these kinds of uh, these um, techniques. And what about the form of this? You know, is it, is it a circle? Is it an oval? Uh, how does it transform as you walk around um, this object? The galleries are not perfect squares. It's not Frank Lloyd Wright's circle within a square. It's um, something slightly askewed of it. Started to think about how we break this thing down with all these discussions that we had early on with uh, with uh, Andrew and Andy about what the limits of the terracotta uh, might be, what are the techniques that we might apply through this. I'll spare you all of the other iterations that we went through, but we ended up with this idea of hand packing um, molds um, that allowed us kind of the greatest amount of variation. You see here, there's this, we've broken down that bowl into this, these uh, three kind of um, types. This first one is the kind of belly of the, of the space of, of the of the vessel it has a an outer surface and has an inner surface the outer surface has that um, that multi curvature uh, surface that that the molds are able to accommodate and then the the back flat surface becomes the surface where you uh, where you're able to lay down and fire the, the object there's the rim of the bowl that has the edge where one's hands are able to touch, where one's um, one's toddler is going to try to lift themselves onto. So there was a lot, there's certain questions that uh, of durability, um, of uh, of delicacy that we wanted to kind of ride the edge of. So the the thinness of that that section is something quite interesting to us. Um, what are the limits of terracotta in terms of maintaining that edge and then controlling it all the way around? Also, it has a flat surface and a round um, edge, and then a, you know, in order to accommodate the, the processes. I'm missing an image here, but the, these inner linings are are relatively flat, so they became um, uh, quite simple in comparison to the other uh, pieces. So we ended up with about 68 unique pieces, which um, flies in the face of all of this <laughs> uh, efficiency and repeatability and extrusions and slicing against that. Um, but it, it calls into question all of these, uh, the uniqueness of each uh, terracotta element, the uniqueness of the firing of it, the um, and where can we find as much efficiency as we can? So 68 unique pieces means this as a, 180 degree rotational symmetry so we can repeat at least a mold at least once or twice. Mm -hmm. But how do you hold this thing up, all these little pieces um, collected together uh, in a, with a lightness, um, with an efficiency in terms of cost too? Uh, um, is it uh, here inscribing the square inside of the circle now? Um, that, that Frank did so well, we, uh, mm -hmm. we looked at kind of the challenges of, of keeping that light, of keeping it delicate and being able to fit within that kind of tight edge. And so working with, uh, with Silman, we, we were able to develop a, a steel structure that is able to kind of meet every single one of those pieces and, um, and connect them at, at four points each. So the belly and the rim, uh, and the lining. Also, glazing. What there's so many options, and that was one of the things that kind of perturbed us in the beginning. That Boston Valley says, "Well, you can do anything. Look at all the stuff we can do. Um, you know, where do you start?" So, 
and that was part of the reason we we wanted to kind of cling on to a project that was um, that was tied to some program, tied to some history, and tied to something that that can help direct us in our exploration. So, in in the ancient Near East, there's um, there's more than clay. There's uh, there's bronze, um, and and there's actually the glazing that that's happened in that space in that time. So the idea that metallics uh, could be a part of it, these kinds of rich colors uh, from Babylon could become a part of it, the evocation of water uh, in a bowl, the, uh, and then the clay body itself, the material of, uh, of the land. We wanted to make sure that we were able to match the actual earth um, of the region uh, and not veer towards the, the red terracottas of, uh, of Italy or, um, or, or anywhere else. And one of the curious things in the in their collection is of objects that were um, were discovered in uh, catastrophes. And for in terms of this uh, this vessel was recovered from Hassan Lu, the, a place that had been burned by fire. So this is a kind of unintentional firing, and has taken on this kind of ashen kind of black color. There's ivories and all sorts of other objects that came from that space, but so that. That kind of um, sparked our imagination in terms of what kind of glaze might be appropriate in in this space. So the the vessel in its context here, um, if you know the Met a little bit, to your right right off the image is the the Great Hall, and this is on the second floor. Those those beautiful uh, uh, Lamassu uh, guys in. Are, are right there. So the the vessel itself is this crossroads, the introduction into into the ancient Near East gallery, which is uh, which is this zone here. So in a way, it is uh, a focal point, but then it's redirecting. It's a traffic circle. So writing, creating that datum uh, of a a water surface reflecting the. The exhibition that's above and, and an axial um, approach was was pretty obvious uh, almost. So there's that drone about to strike the, the ziggurat and turning the other, the other orientation over from um, the Great Hall. So when we um, started to think about what this mock-up actually might be, uh, they said 68 unique pieces probably is not a good idea. So we kind of honed that down to nine, I believe, or eight, somewhere like around there. Let's count. That's six, nine, nine pieces. Um, just a little corner of, uh, of the vessel and Normally when you do a mock-up, you do either the typical section that is repeated uh, everywhere, or you do a, a corner which is, which is unique and which is the most challenging. So there's no corners in this thing, but we picked the most challenging bit where the circle and the square really conflict. So you'll, you'll notice all of the, the elements are less square and less circled than, than anywhere else in the, in the, in the piece. So also, this was the first time we got to see the actual pieces um, in person. Um, uh, some part more successful than others, but all amazingly beautiful in their own right. The steel frame and, and the, the moments um, of connection directly to, the, to those pieces. We, we had to introduce um, uh, studs in order to uh, to thread onto um, the structure, and of course we're going to discover all of the challenges. I think we've heard before about uh, uh, differential shrinkage and just tolerances uh, that we developed. So there there was the the tolerance between uh, uh, panel to panel, and also in um, the fabrication of the structure itself. So there's we're going to see a, a few more images of like some of the the things that we we met. So four points of connection should mean 
ultimate flexibility in um, in uh, in orientation and um, uh, and connection, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> one of the things that um, that uh, Andy had to introduce was uh, an infill for uh, that lip in order to be able to to fire it and not have it sag and then get have have that cutoff um, post process. Some things have to be grinded or ground. And and look at that, look at that tolerance. Pretty good, right? <laughs> um with a lot of nudging and strapping and tying, uh, you know, with with wires, you know, we we were realizing there's some uh, limitation to the scale of our structure, and we, I think there's going to be some um, some more research that needs to be done with that. So each of these corners end up getting a little bit uh, jerry rigged, even a hacksaw. Somehow it got relatively close. Um, even able to make it all the way over here yesterday afternoon. And you know, we hope that this uh, project right now in schematic design is able to actually proceed and become um, a reality. Well, of course, we'll have to contend with um, uh, curators and cost and, and all of that, but, uh, but we're really excited about the next steps of Terracotta. Thanks.